People who do architecture photography or also for night sky and for landscape, they use perspective correction via shift lenses. And shift lenses can shift the perspective to the left hand side, to the right hand side, that's the horizontal direction, or they can shift up and down for perspective correction and that's the vertical axis. And they typically face the following problem. So if you shift to the left hand side, you can expand your image and if you shift to the right hand side, you can expand it to the right hand side. You could use these three images now, stitch them together in post-processing and create in this way a nice panorama shot. And of course, if you rotate your shift lens on the camera body, you can also shift up and you can shift down and then you have five images. The problem is, and what's missing here is, if you wanted to go for a three times three matrix to create a very wide field of view, you have the missing images in the four corners. And in order to get them, you would need to have a combination of simultaneous shift vertically and horizontally. And that's not what is included in shift lenses. I cannot even do it with my very professional phase one XT body where I have shift functionality horizontally and vertically, but I cannot fill those gaps in the four corners. And uh, I found a solution recently, and I also saw this is going back to 2018 or 19. We are a shift adapter, or this one here is in particular called the Magic Shift Converter. It's from a Chinese brand, I'm going into that in a moment. And with that adapter combined with a shift lens, so I have now my camera body, I have the Magic Shift Converter mounted on the camera body, and I have a shift lens mounted on the mount of the Magic Shift Converter. I can fill those gaps in the corners, and can create a three times three matrix of images, which then later in post-processing, I can cut together and stitch together. And even discounting for the overlaps, I get a very wide field of view. I get a very high resolution. So this has more than 17,000 times 10,000 pixels. I have no perspective distortion because you could argue that you might be able to fill the gaps in the four corners by rotating the tripod after shift in one or the other direction. And if you rotate the camera on the tripod, you can take the shot and maybe fill the corners, but that will distort the image if you later stitch it together. And the distortion can be only corrected via software in Lightroom or in Photoshop. And if you do that, it will dilute the image quality and that's not what we want. Here we have no perspective distortion because it's all based on mechanical shifting of the lens, but of a combination of a magic shift converter with a traditional shift lens. And as a last remark before we start the video, if you have cameras like I'm using in this video here, the Sony a7R4, these cameras have pixel shift and pixel shift means you can lift up the native resolution of 60 megapixels of the Sony a7R4 to more than 240 megapixels per frame. And that means if you stitch together nine images with 240 megapixels, and even if you discount for the massive overlap you will have in those frames in post-processing, you end up at give or take a gigapixel resolution. And that's just a fantastic optionality. Let's get started. As said in the intro uh, to that video, shift lenses are expensive. So first of all, here is a shift lens uh, from Canon that is a 24 millimeter shift lens here and it has shift functionality in both directions, horizontal and vertical. You typically have a shift scale here. And these lenses, they are not cheap. Uh, here's another one from Canon, which I love because it has a much wider angle here. So that's the TSE 17 millimeter from Canon, very nice shift lens, very good optical qualities, is very nice. You also see here already that the wide angle is reflected in uh, the form of the lens here and you would not be able to use a filter on that one um, in contrast to this one here, which is 24 millimeters, where you actually can use a filter. So I have a protector on this lens here. I also reviewed, as I showed in the intro, uh, this, let's say, old school PC Super Angulon R lens from Leica, which is no longer available and made uh, by Leica, so you have to buy this uh, secondhand. And uh, I reviewed that on the Leica M Monochrome, fantastic optical quality, fantastic images, and in general, very good to have this perspective correction. That's what, by the way, here 
PC stands for. So if you look at the lens, there is this PC here. PC stands for perspective correction. And uh, shift lenses are in general a very expensive equipment. I have another one here, which is from uh, Nikon. That one here I use with an adapter on my Nikon C7. It's also a very expensive lens. It's a very good lens from the optical properties. It's a 19 millimeter lens. And um, so this one is sitting between the 17 and the 24 millimeter from the Canon series. And it's also a very good lens. Already here again, the wide angle reflected in, uh, you know, the physical properties of the lens, not possible to use a filter on this one here. And I think very good image quality and perspective correction is very meaningful here. And maybe to round this up, if you are in professional architectural photography, this one here might be an option. So that's the XT body from phase one. Let me get this right into the camera. So that's from phase one, the XT body here. You see the XT here and uh, you can mount a digital back from phase one and uh, can use it to shift. So there's shift functionality here and here, both in horizontal and vertical direction. I reviewed that body here with my IQ4, but currently I have my IQ4 mounted on my XF body from phase one. And uh, I'm going to do some product shooting in the course of this week. So that's why it is mounted on the XF body and not on the XT body which is this one here. And that's as far as I'm aware and know, this is the most expensive shift combination you can have. And it's only for professional purposes. I use this for architecture. I use it for large prints, which I sell to clients. And uh, this is the best you can have, but is very expensive. And that's not what this video is about. So let's get this all out of the way. And let's start to focus on our main topic. And the main topic here is again coming from China. Let's get this into the camera here. So it's called the Laowa MSC. MSC stands for Magic Shift Converter. I would call this an adapter. You get shipped it in that box here. In that box you basically have a very non-eye-catching plastic bag to protect your adapter or converter. And that's interesting. I've seen this for the first time and uh, I typically don't work with these kind of, let's say, adapters here from uh, China. But this one really caught my attention. And I also was made aware by someone else that this is already around for one or two years. There are a few reviews in the web already. So I had to try this out. It's kind of affordable. It's, I think, less than $400. And uh, for a shift solution, this is really cheap because those lenses here, typically they come at a price tag between $1,500 and $2,500. I think the Leica is even more expensive here and we should not even go into the territory and discuss the phase one solution because there we are talking mainly about a price tag in the order of a magnitude of a luxury car. So um, less than 400 bucks is quite affordable. I know it's a lot of money for all of us and uh, therefore I do not say this adapter is cheap. But what I'm going to say is it's an affordable adapter and it's a budget solution because shift solutions for professional architectural photography, they typically cost you a hell of a money. And with this adapter, you can almost do the same. I say almost because you will lose a little bit on the optical side. I come to that in a moment, but you can do nice and great things with that adapter here. And that's what this video is about. I'm going to show this to demonstrate it. And uh, this adapter comes in uh, two versions. One version is able to mount Canon EF lenses on Sony FE mount. And the other one is doing the same, but for Nikon lenses, I have the Canon version here. I think the Nikon version is equally as well usable and fine. And um, I'm also sure this adapter will get deployed to more camera bodies. So currently this one is for the Sony FE, which is probably addressing a large audience because a lot of people shoot with Sony A7 series cameras. I have the Sony A7R4 here, which I'm going to use for this demonstration. So it's very versatile and as I said, is a very affordable, a budget type solution for getting shift functionality and a perspective correction. And most importantly, from a photographic point of view, a change in perspectives in your personal photography. So let's get the box out of the way and let's have a look at the adapter. So let's get this opened here. 
And then if we look at that, so this is the mount for the EF lenses from the Canon universe. That's one of the richest lens systems in the world. It has been built up and developed over decades. And there are lots of options to choose from. I will just mention a few here in order to illustrate how versatile and fungible this solution is. And this is the part where the adapter or converter gets mounted on the Sony FE body. In my case, that's the Sony A7R Mark IV. And if I look at that here, you see there is glass built in here. So there is optics, you see this by the reflections. It's not just a look through, there is real optics in here. And I'm going to show this in the specs in a moment, what's been built in here. But uh, clearly this comes with a few things to note. First of all, typically if you have an adapter with optics integrated, you lose an f-stop. For instance, if you have a teleconverter of 1.4 or two times, then uh, when you mount your telelens on it and then the adapter on the camera, you typically lose f-stops and you lose light. And the same happens here, but it's only one f-stop you lose. The second to notice that you basically have an extension of the focal length. And the factor is 1.4, so Laowa makes an example with one of their own built lenses with the 12 millimeter wide angle from Laowa. And um, then you have here with this converter, you have instead of 12 millimeters, a 17 or close to 17 millimeter focal length. So the factor is about 1.4, which you need to take into account in the same way as if you mount a full frame lens on a crop sensor, then you have the crop factor in between, which gives you the true focal length on a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent. So that's what's happening here too. In general, the build quality of that adapter is very nice. There is a tripod mount here, and it's also good if you wanna rotate that adapter, which I show in the camera later. Um, you have a scale here, so you can shift in both directions uh, 10 millimeters. So overall in range of 20 millimeters. There is a lock here for, you see maybe that I should put this differently. There is a lock here for the lens mount from the Canon EF universe and to make sure it's locked on when you mounted it. And uh, there is also here what they call a push 360 degrees. And that push here is, uh, you know, used in a way that you can rotate your camera body when this is mounted on a tripod or you can rotate the lens mounted on the camera body and there are stops every 45 degrees. So you have good orientation. If you have two stops, you know that you rotate it by exactly 90 degrees. And then the shift functionality, that's here with a lock. I try to bring this into the camera again. So it says here, lock. I hope you can see this. And if I unlock this, I create my shift functionality. So let's put it here in this way. And then you see here how this is shifting. 10 millimeters in both directions. So very nice mechanism. In general, the build quality of that adapter is great. It's very, very smooth and at the same time firm. And if you found your shift, so let's say here we shifted now uh, to five millimeters to the left-hand side, you can use that lock again and then it's really locked in the meaning of the word locked. It cannot slip away and if you have heavy lenses on your adapter or converter here, it will not accidentally slip. And I think that's very good. So if you wanna change the spec, unlock it and shift it back you know, to your level metered zero here. That's the way it works. Very nice, very good build quality, as I said, and uh, I'm very curious to try this out from an optical perspective, see the image quality, and also show a few tips and tricks how you can use this with uh, Canon lenses on Sony FE bodies, and uh, actually what optionality this gives to you in your perspectives as a photographer. So here you see the spec sheet from the Laowa homepage. And most importantly on the right hand side, you see in order to make a shift functionality working and still keeping the full area of a full frame sensor, you need an enlarged image circle. And I think that is very clear. That's why you can also use, for instance, typical shift lenses from Nikon or Canon with an adapter on cropped medium format cameras like the Fuji GFX series, because these shift lenses, they have an enlarged image circle. And the same is true for that magic shift converter here. You also see at the bottom of that spec sheet how the focal length works. And you see they have this example I mentioned before, the Laowa 12 millimeter f2.8 lens plus the magic shift converter creates all in a focal length of 17 millimeter with an aperture of f4 widest open. And that means you lose one f-stop 
and you have an extension factor on the focal length of 1.4. So we are going to mount this adapter since this is the version done for the Sony FE mount body on the Sony A7R4. It's a nice camera. I have some videos on that camera on my channel. It's a very good camera in terms of resolution, in-body image stabilization, you know, all the functionalities and all of that. And there is one important thing I think which uh, people need to be aware of. If you want to use a lens here and that adapter has no electronic communication between the lens, which will then be mounted here and between the camera. And if you don't have electronic communication, you need to tell your Sony camera that you are fine to actually take pictures even when a lens without electronic contacts is mounted. And the way you do this is you go here into the menu. And when you go into the menu, you have on the second, on the second main section here, so the second camera section, you actually have here, if you go down, you have the section with the silent shooting and electronic front curtain. And then you have a menu entry which says release without a lens. And since there is no electronic communication between the adapter and the camera body, which also cuts off the communication between the lens and the camera body, you basically have to enable this. So if you go on this, if you have it disabled, the Sony a7R4 and any Sony a7 series camera will not be able to take photos with that lens mounted. So you need to go here to enable. And by the way, there is a second menu entry which says release without a cart. And this one I strongly recommend to always disable. If you enable this, then you might find yourself in a situation where you just transferred images from your SD card to the computer. You forgot to reinsert the SD card. You take nice photos and all of a sudden you realize they are not stored. So it is very risky to have this one here on enabled. That's why I recommend disable it. And on release without lens, that's absolutely safe to have it always at enable because you will clearly see whether you have mounted a lens and whether it makes sense to take a photo. And that's why I think you should have enabled here. And then you're good to go on the camera body of the Sony A7 series. So we have now almost infinite possibilities what we can mount on that uh, converter here. And the reason is that the Canon EF lens system per se is very rich and has lots of lenses to offer. But there are also various adapters you can use and mount adapter on adapter if you want. And you have to pay a little bit of attention that this is really working from the laws of physics, but in many cases it will work. And I think the most classical candidate to be mounted on that converter here is the 24 to 70 millimeter L lens. And this is the classic lens with, um, let's get this into the camera, with a uh, widest open aperture of 2.8. And it's also the Mark II lens. There is a Mark II here. And this is, I think, the standard zoom for the Canon EF cameras. And you can use that on that shift adapter and enjoy a focal length between 24 and 70 millimeters to basically do architectural shots, you know, photography in a way that you do panorama stitchings, whatever it is. And typically shift lenses do not have a zoom. So you have here quite a nice way to combine, uh, you know, the good with the useful and the good is to have a zoom if you are not uh, one of those persons like I'm typically saying I want to shoot with prime lenses. So I do not use zoom lenses very often, but it gives you a lot of versatility in particular on architecture because you might want to catch a certain perspective, which you would not catch if you would not have the option to zoom. And uh, another interesting combination, which I never have seen before and tried out, is basically to combine the shift converter with its shift functionality in both directions, X and Y, with a shift lens. So this is the classical shift lens with 17 millimeters. I showed that before in the video. And if we mount that shift lens on the magic shift converter, we get a little more functionality and I need to try this out. So when we later go for shooting and I'm sharing, of course, my experience here in this video, I want to mount a shift lens on a shift converter and try to see if I can do a three times three matrix panorama stitching, which is uh, something which would give me probably a very high resolution and also a lot of options. And the 17 millimeter lens is good for that. 
I think you could also do this with the 24 millimeter shift lens, but in general, I think the idea of combining a shift converter with a shift lens is a very interesting value proposition. So we are going to look into that and we are trying it out. But before we need a second technicality to quickly discuss. The first one was make sure in your A7R4 or whatever A7 series cameras you have to enable that this camera can actually shoot without the lens mounted. And the second technicality has to do with the way these Canon lenses operate. And uh, you see here, for instance, on the shift lens, there is a nice focus ring, same way as here, you have a nice focus ring, but you don't have anything to steer the aperture. And steering the aperture is typically done electronically in the Canon EF mount system. So let's get the zoom lens here. If you look into the zoom lens, let's open this up quickly. It's wide open. There is a zoom ring here and you see the scale here basically changing, the distance scale, but there is no visible sign of aperture plates. And Canon is doing this electronically and that's why you have to use a little trick to get this done. And if you have Canon EF mount lenses, you very likely also have a Canon EF mount camera and uh, you can use, it does not necessarily need to be a full frame camera, you can also use an APS-C camera, so a cheaper one. Or maybe you have uh, an R camera here. So I have the EOS R here and that's actually a special version of the EOS R, it's the RA and A stands for astrophotography. So this has a modified sensor for the Milky Way and photographing star constellations. And I can use that camera now to, uh, let's say, adjust my aperture. And there is a trick how you can do this and I wanna quickly show this because otherwise the whole system and the whole value proposition collapses and is not usable because you will always have the aperture wide open and typically for architecture, you might wanna go for an aperture of f5.6 or you might even want to go for an aperture of f8 to get a very good depth of field in terms of sharpness, not a shallow depth of field, but sharpness corner to corner from you where the camera is up to the horizon. And uh, then you might want to use f8 or f11 or what have you. So let's quickly look into that, how to do that. And there are lots of function buttons here. Actually on classical DSLRs in Canon, there is always a dedicated uh, depth of field button where you can test how uh, it will look under a certain aperture situation. And that's not the case necessarily on the EOS R system, but there are function buttons. And here's a nice function button, for instance, which you can program and you can assign this in the menu. So let's quickly look into that. Let's switch it on. Let's go to the menu system. And then here in the settings menu, on the fourth page, you have customized buttons. And if you click on that, you get here a visual representation of the EOS R and you can scroll through that and assign buttons. And you see here, I have assigned to that button here, MFN, which is what it's saying here. Let's go back into the camera menu. So it says MFN. I have assigned the depth of field preview function. Now, whenever I adjust my aperture and push that button here, I get in the live view here, a preview of my depth of field. And uh, that is something which we can use now for a little trick to adjust the aperture and get the magic done. So first of all, let's look into the lens here. And again, we see no apertures. This thing is open and uh, wide open, I should say. So you see the reflections here of the optics. And uh, let's open the camera and let's mount the lens on the camera so that we can work with it. Actually looks quite nice. I like the EOS R system a lot and in particular for me, since I do a lot of night sky shootings, the RA is really a good value. I think uh, that's something I will not regret to have purchased. So now here, let's go back here into the normal mode. So now here we have the aperture and here is the aperture wheel, which we can use to change the aperture. Let's get this close to the camera and let's change the aperture now. Let's go for demonstration purposes up to, I don't know, an aperture of f16 maybe. And now we push the preview button here, which I programmed. That's a customized button now, M function. And if I push that, you see how it gives me a preview of the depth of field. Let's do this. Currently, we don't have it. And by the way, let's maybe zoom this a little bit in. So if I push the button, it gives me a depth of field preview. And since I stopped this down, the fuzziness, I didn't actually... Uh, I didn't actually focus here, so I can focus. And um, 
if I push now the depth of field preview button, it shows me a larger depth of field and that's because I stopped down from F4 before to F60. So now I push that button here and hold the button pushed. I do this actually better with my thumb here. So, and now I can unmount the lens. And if you now look into the lens, you see this is stopped down. It's stopped down to the aperture we have chosen before. You also see the aperture blades and that's quite nice. It's a very nice trick. I'd like to bring this a little closer to the camera here so that you can see it. So we basically adjusted now the aperture to the value we want to have for our shooting on that adapter here. And if we mount it, the aperture will stay in that way and will not change. Now, you might want to ask, how do I get this back? Of course, you get it back by mounting it again on the EOS R here or on any other EOS system DSLR and then it's mounted on again and you see here it's stored the aperture because I didn't change it in the camera but now I can stop it down again and by the way even if I would not stop it down um, it would actually readjust so now we can open this again unmount it look into the lens and now it's wide open again no aperture blades visible as we had it before and that's the trick you can use to basically get the aperture set and what I typically do is for architecture as I mentioned before f5.6 or f8 so I can use the R body to get my aperture adjusted to the value I want and then I can mount it on that adapter here and in this way get the parameters for my shooting. So now the shooting experiment I want to do because it's the most exotic I want to really mount that 17 millimeter shift lens from Canon onto the adapter and then on the Sony body to get the shift functionality in all directions and I want to try if I can do a 9 times 9 matrix panorama stitching and create a lot of resolution and also a lot of interesting perspectives. And in order to do that, let's just quickly go through the procedure. We open the camera here, you know we have to adjust the aperture. Let's look quickly into the Lens here, you see the aperture is wide open, so we do not see aperture blades. It's electronically steered, as I said, we have these contacts here. So let's mount this on the EOS R. Let's get the aperture adjusted. I want to shoot with F8, so I think F8 is the right one here. We push the depth of field preview button, we unmount it. And now it should be stopped down. And now you see it. You see the aperture blades and you see how this is stopped down to an aperture of f8, which is nice. Let's get here the, um, the protection on. So the aperture has been set in the lens we want to use. Now let's mount this via the magic shift converter to the camera. And uh, let's first of all mount the um, lens and then let's mount this to the camera. So there's a red marking here. There is also a red marking here on the adapter. And I think if you match it here, it should nicely line up. So that's the lens. Now let's get the Sony A7R4 and let's get this mounted here to the camera. Again, you can use that red button here and you have the alignment for the lens mount on the A7R4 here. And so we can basically hold this on, line it up and mount it. That's the combination I have in mind. What a nice combination. Now, what can you do with that combination? There is now a lot of functionality here. First of all, we can shift that lens here in various directions and we can shift the magic shift adapter and in this way create all kinds of funky combinations. And uh, I'm going out shooting now. I will show the results, share here in this video. And let's see if this is maybe the most magic combination of a shift lens on a shift converter to shift and shift and shift. So let's see what we get out of that combination here. I'm really curious to try this out. I've never done this before, but uh, we'll see in a moment when we come to the shooting results what I will finally think about that funny combination here. The shooting location I've chosen is at ETH, stands in German for Eidgenössische Technische Hochschule, is a very famous, very large university, is a little bit up the hill in Zurich city, and you oversee from that large place here 
nicely the city and you get a very wide field of view and a good perspective. So here's the view you get from that nice location here and uh, you see I'm overseeing Zurich city. By the way the place behind me is still very empty. In Zurich we are strict in social distancing so there are not a lot of people. Typically it's very crowded here. So let's start the shooting. So here is now the camera mounted on a tripod. On the camera mounted is the shift converter and on the shift converter we have the 17 mm Canon shift lens which with a factor of 1.4 is an effective focal length of 24 mm. That's the combination we want to use for the next minutes. So let me quickly explain the workflow here. We want to create a 3 times 3 image matrix, so 3 rows and 3 columns. And this is the middle field in that matrix here, where I just took the shot. By the way, I'm using focus peaking here because this is manual focus. And now I'm starting with two more images to fill the middle row of this three times three matrix with images. And the control here is done via the Canon shift lens. So the horizontal shifting is done via the shift functionality in the 17 millimeter TS lens from Canon. The magic shift converter is used, now I'm going back to the middle position in the image matrix. The magic shift converter is used to actually do the vertical direction. So I'm shifting now the middle position, which would be in matrix terminology element 2,2, up to an upshift. We are vertical shifting on the converter. And then I'm going to the right and the left hand side and take the remaining shots to fill the first row of the 3 times 3 image matrix. And in the same way I can also fill now the last row which is row number 3 and get 9 images completed in that image matrix I showed in the intro of that video. And then later in Lightroom I can automatically stitch them together and Lightroom is removing all the overlaps between those frames. So very nice, very easy workflow and work just frictionless for me. Later the day I mounted the 24 to 70 mm focal length and here I'm showing how to rotate the camera on the magic shift adapter. So let's have a look at the shooting results and I'm looking at three different situations here. The first is a three times image stitching, three images stitched together in Lightroom, horizontal panorama stitching and if I zoom into the image you see the pixel density and the high level of details you get in this image. Very nice. Second example is the one from the intro to this video, 3x3 three three image matrix, panorama stitching, very high resolution in terms of pixels. And if you zoom into Zurich city here, you even see the Urania star observatory here in the middle of the city. So very nice large prints possible. And the last sample is vertical stitching of three images. The overlap is cancelled out by Lightroom and again if you zoom in, a very nice result, lots of details here and you see the optionality and the fungibility of that combination of shift converter and shift lens. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and peace out.